guys, welcome back to that new video. Today I wanted to talk about something not really fun, which is insect and pest infection, which is not really, really nice. I'm sorry. Uh, it was a long overdue uh, video. I had to collect a lot of images, uh, a lot of clips, because uh, thankfully not everything had happened to me at once. So it took months for me to collect um, images. Uh, but I've had, I think, almost everything you can have because well, I have almost 100 plants in a, a one-bedroom apartment, so, you know, I have more chances to have uh, pest infections. So, uh, the first one I'm going to start with is fungus gnats. So, I think that's the one that's the most common. Um, I'm going to talk about that because I'm pretty lucky I don't have fungus gnats at home, even though I have a ton of plants. But I do know why, I think. It's because I let my soil dry of my plants uh, in between watering really much. I don't have a ton of plants that needs a lot of moist soil all the time. That's why I think I don't have fungus gnats. I know that because, for example, last week I had some on one plant and I was like, Mm -hmm. That's weird because I usually don't have some, but I realized that because that plant has been treated for uh, trips infestation, those little larvae, and I was like watering it and putting a lot of water on the leaves a lot, and then because trips doesn't like that, and then fungus snacks happened. So I have one good advice if you don't want to have fungus gnats is to wait in between watering, and if you have some is to change the surface of the soil. It will remove most of the larvas and the eggs that the mom fungus gnats uh, put into soil. Um, and then you put back some soil that are dry because it will discourage the mom to put the larvas again if there is some moms again in your interior. Um, there is also another tip if you really uh, are having trouble fighting the fungus gnats is to put like some sand on top of the uh, soil. It will discourage the mom to put their uh, eggs too. And you also have some tapes you can put uh, so the fungus gnat will uh, be glued to this and you can remove most of them uh, every time you remove the tape. But I really do encourage you to do the first techniques because, yeah, it's really working for me. It's my experience though. Second insects I wanted to talk about is mealybugs because um, those can be really deadly for plants. I do not think they are impossible to get rid of because if you are watching your plants carefully at least once a week you can detect a beginning of an, of an infestation and if you detect it uh, early enough mealybugs are not really hard to get rid of. First thing you want to do is remove them with a q-tip that you have dipped into alcohol. I remove most of them uh, by myself and then I will use an insecticide like a classic one like for example this one we can find in France but you can find it anywhere else most of them oil based and also with some type of soap really works really well to treat the plants after once you've removed all of the mealybugs and you be careful to remove uh, the eggs they usually have under them uh, and then to treat you can use that insecticide you can find in the in the stores that will works really well I've had mealybugs once in a big tree that I have it's a dracaena that's in my uh, kitchen and I had to uh, do the treatment twice and remove them uh, with my hand I mean some cottons and q-tips twice and then it was gone I will have applied that like few times after as you know treatment to be careful and it never came back so I think they're not that hard to get rid of which is a good news for you if you have mealybugs and if you saw it early enough. Third insects I want to talk is trips which is uh, those uh, um, yellow greenish larvae you can find below leaves those ones are a little bit harder to get rid of to be honest to me this one was a tough one what I really do advise though is to put the plants in quarantine, put them into your bathtub or your um, shower cabin and with the water remove most of them. Uh, the water drain will remove most of them and I think it's really important to do this. Then what I usually do is I take soap, uh, castile soap or um, plant you can find, botanical soap, I don't know how you call them. And I will soap every leaf uh, with my hand, which I know it can be really long if you have like an ivy that is touched, but um, this is really something that works and 
I'm sorry, there's nothing else that have worked in the past that I can advise you for uh, those type of insects and pest infestation. So I will do this and then let it sit for a full uh, night, then rinse it all and put back the plants into his pot on the morning after. Uh, because you still want the plants to uh, try to survive. So, for example, in my bathroom, I don't have any uh, windows, so I will put it back where it should be so it can photosynthesis during the day. And I will be, I will have to do this two or three times a week on the plants if I have pest infestation and, and they are trips. Uh, but yeah, really, you kind of need to do this. Just spraying insecticide will not work. Just spraying solution with soap and water that you might have created for your plants in general will not work. You need to remove them, treat them really nice for a full night. You need to do the leaves and the stems and then rinse it, put it back to its place. And do this again a few times till the infestation is gone. This is the one I'm so sorry, but this is the one to me it's, that is really hard, but what I advise to is change the soil in case they have laid some eggs in it. But for example, for my Monstera that was pretty big, I was not able to change the soil to be honest. Even maybe it was a two person job and I didn't, I didn't thought about asking my husband, but I was not feeling like doing this and she's doing better right now. I haven't seen trips on that plant in weeks and she has popped up uh, new leaves. So I think I got rid of most of them. I'm still watching really carefully that plant and I will spray a spray that I have made this is not this anymore I have used the container because I don't like to throw away and it's a really great spray I advise you to reuse your stuff it will reduce your waste and you can I've put like a little bit of soap that soap I was talking about and the rest of water and this is something that I will spray on my plants sometimes to time just to be careful and especially the ones that has been um, infected in the past. Another pest infestation I wanted to talk about was scales insect. They usually like, uh, they usually look like uh, some brown dots on your leaves. They are hard to remove. You can use like an old toothbrush with soap uh, or you can use um, like tweezers. Sometimes I even had to use like my nail because it was hard to remove. So first thing you do, quarantine them, plants, remove most of them and then you can treat it with soap again uh, like a plant soap or you can spray with an insecticide, rinse, I will advise you to leave it for the full night, rinse it in the morning and put back the plants. Be careful, this one is just like trips, it's, it can, and mealybugs too actually, but it can uh, propagate into your jungle pretty quickly. I have friends, I have a friend that has had that uh, into his, her orchids recently and it was all over her orchids. Um, next uh, pest infestation I wanted to talk is red spider mites. Those are the type of insect that loves calytheas. So they are actually really hard to, to find because first they're really tiny and calytheas below their leaves has have really purplish uh, leaves so they can be tricky to find. Uh, you have to kind of put your glasses on or there is something else that you can um, that can helps to detect they uh, do a, they will build kind of a web um, that looks a little bit like dust and this is a good way to find them because this will pop out on top of a um, purplish leaves uh, also if you have a calyphia that's not doing good you have an humidifier, you are spraying her pretty often, you even maybe have put a tray with marble clay, marble clay to put water to evaporate and raise the humidity. There is probably a pest infestation. <laughs> Calypheas are really prone to that. I have a full video about Calypheas if you want to go look at it. But yeah, it's probably that. So yeah, be careful. The spider mites love Scalifias. So what I advise if this happens to you is that you also put your plants into your bathtub or your um, cabin, shower cabin, uh, and you rinse all of the leaves. Scalifias has big leaves, so this will be easier than on an ivy, for example. But if it happens on an ivy, which had happened in the past to a friend, you can still do this. Rinse them really good. You can buy an insecticide with oil base and soap. It will work, but you need to spray the entire plant, let it sit for at least to a night. That's what I've, I usually do and it works. Uh, and then you rinse it really good and put back the plants where it should be. Because Calypheas, for example, are really uh, fragile. So 
they need their uh, light during the day to photosynthesis and keep uh, you know surviving even in case of infestation so yeah that's what i will do i will never just spray a plant and let's see how it goes it never really works i really advise you to take the thing um, by your hand <laughs> remove most of them usually with water or whatever for mealybugs i advised cottons and uh, rubbing alcohol but it could be something else you know uh, and then spray uh, for calithias for example if i have like red spider mites i will do this at the beginning once or twice a week if the infestation is really big and then space out the treatments let, let's say once every two weeks but yeah i will usually do this um, in complement i will also spray with my uh, soapy solution that i've handmade the calithia sometimes once a week just as a prevention especially if she had suffered from spider mites in the past another insect i wanted to talk is a caterpillar why are you gonna tell me because this is something that usually happens on balconies or outdoors uh, plants for example i'm showing you one that is eating uh, my plants outside i think it's actually a butterfly that have laid eggs on my on one of my plants because i have found one of those every day for the past five days they eat they are eating all of my plants the only thing you need to do is remove them by hand. I mean by hand, don't touch them, but remove them. And then you can spray an insecticide to make sure um, she's not, the the next egg might uh, get killed by that or doesn't like, doesn't want to stay in that pot. But I'm saying this because it happened to me once that I have brought back a my pothos actually inside. And I could see the day after like, two holes really distinctive distinctive holes like looks like caterpillar it was actually a little bug that had like a ton of foot a little bit like a caterpillar but we call it milpat in french not sure whatever i just had to remove it uh with with a tissue or a q-tips and then it was gone it's just to tell you if you had like really nicely shaped uh, holes that are uh, getting on your leaves you might have that type of insect a type of caterpillar inside it's not really common but mine i think i bought it at a florist maybe the the florist the no actually at a store a plant store maybe the store had some into the soil uh, somewhere and i brought one back it's not common but it happens so i want you to know before uh, if it happens to you we never know okay that's it you guys for that video i hope you liked it i hope it was helpful if you have any other questions please leave them comment below if you have any advice on one of the insects i've talked about or even something else please leave them comment below too i will be, I will be uh, really happy to learn more about that and if not i'll see you in the next video bye